I feel like a little bit awkward in front of the camera. I feel like it's been a minute since I've made a video like this for you guys. <laughs> hey guys, so like I said, it's been a minute since I've been here like sitting down making a video for you, but um, here we go. I guess we're gonna, we're gonna do this. I have been thinking about making this video for a little while now, um, but now's a good time and I'll kind of like get into that in just a second, but I've been on YouTube for a little while now and through all the kinds of different videos that I've made, um, definitely the most frequently viewed and like sought out videos are the ones about OCD. That's probably actually how a lot of you guys that are subscribed have found me. You know, I've like talked about it until I'm blue in the face. I don't wanna go through the story again because it's like, I'll just, you know, you know me. I just like, I talk. So we're gonna skip that. So if you need a refresher, you can go watch those videos. That's fine. You know, like I said, I've had this idea for a video for a long time and I thought now was actually a good time because um, so this month August of 2018 is actually the five-year anniversary of what I consider to be like the onset of my OCD um, so it's kind of like a benchmark year and I thought that it would be a good time to talk about it because um, I still get comments all the time on those videos and I have people you know sending me messages um, on Instagram, on Facebook, um, which I do want to say, by the way, if you want to reach out to me, the best way really is through YouTube comments. Can you stop biting me, sir? The best way to reach out to me um, is in YouTube because a lot of my stuff on Facebook goes unread. I just don't think to check it, like the messages that come from people that aren't friends with me. And also on Instagram, I don't know if it's like a glitch with my account or something, but the like, the messages that go into my like DMs from people that are not, like we're not following each other, um, they like disappear. So I might read it and then go to answer it and it's like not there anymore. So I get your messages sometimes, but like the best way really is just to kind of, you know, leave a comment or something on YouTube. Why are you biting me? Why are you like this? I don't want this. No, I said no. But I did want to also say, before we get into like the meat of what this video is, I'm sure you can tell by the title what I'm going to be talking about, but I did want to say that today's video is actually a sponsored video. That's right, your girl is like coming up in the world. I have a sponsorship happening, like that's insane. <laughs> no, but actually a couple months ago, BetterHelp actually reached out to me and asked if I wanted to be a part of uh, their program and let you guys kind of know what's going on with them, which is really cool because it's something that I had heard about a lot from other YouTubers and I, it's something that I had looked into for myself because a couple of my friends in real life, I know I don't show you guys a lot of my friends, but I do have some. A couple of them actually use this platform for themselves, so I already knew about it and I was already kind of interested, so I was like, yeah, I want to help. If you haven't heard of BetterHelp, it's basically a platform that you can have affordable, kind of discreet and private uh, counseling sessions. Um, and how it works is you can sign up through the link that I'm going to put in the description bar. You'll fill out a questionnaire. They'll match you with a counselor within 24 hours or so. And then of course, if you don't like this counselor or if you just don't hit it off or if there's a problem or whatever, you can of course redo that process and get a new counselor. And it's essentially, you just do it through your phone, your computer, your tablet, whatever. You don't ever have to see um, a therapist in person, which I think is really important because a lot of you guys have told me that where you live you can't have access or you're a little bit nervous about going in person or whatever. So this is kind of a good way to do that through, you know, you can text them at any time of the day or night, you can schedule conference calls, whatever you need to do, whatever kind of fits your schedule and your personal wants, I guess. Yeah, I think it's a really good opportunity and you guys know that I've been pretty honest with you and you'll see throughout this video that I'm gonna be very honest with you. Um, so I wouldn't recommend something that I didn't think was actually like a good fit. So if you wanna check it out, again, I'm gonna leave the link in the description below. All right, so let's kind of get into what I wanna talk about in this video. So like I said, it is about the five year anniversary of my onset of OCD. Of course, before the like onset day, you know, like D-Day, I had like, you know, I had signs of it prior, like in my, you know, early years in life and whatever. But I feel like it didn't really come to a head until five years ago, like this month. And once again, I've talked about this before. So if you want, I'll link all those videos. You can watch that again. But to just preface this video, the type of OCD that I deal with is 
typically called pure O OCD, which I think is kind of like a misnomer because people think that it somehow is treated differently than other types of OCD or that it's somehow different. Um, but it's really not. It's treated the same way through the same types of therapy and all that stuff. Um, and a lot of people kind of have this thing where they're like, oh, I have pure O OCD, which is purely obsessional OCD. And they're like, I don't have compulsions, so I can't be treated the same way. But you do. Like, if you've been diagnosed with OCD, you have the, the C part of OCD, that's the compulsion, that's obsessive compulsive disorder. So you have that. You might be ruminating, you might be... Avoiding, avoiding is a big one. You know, I've actually, I just recently talked about this with someone kind of close to me about how we kind of think when we're going for treatment that it's not gonna work or whatever because we're somehow special. Like someone, like no one's ever thought the things that I have thought and no one's ever had the experiences that I have. And I'm here to tell you right now that you're not special. <laughs> like not in that way, my friend. Anything that you've thought, someone else has thought. So what I've done, I've made a little list. This is a short list because I had to like really rack my brain because personally OCD isn't really bothering me at this moment in my life. But I go through, you know, the ebb and flow of OCD just like anybody else does. And just a couple weeks ago, I was able to convince myself that I had contracted HIV which was a lot of fun because, you know, I have the typical like black and white thinking of OCD and I have the like catastrophic thinking, which I'm sure was really fun for, you know, everybody involved. Um, so let's move on. <laughs> I have compiled a list of some of my weirdest OCD thoughts or compulsions or whatever kind of like together. And um, this is by no means all of them. I personally find that a lot of my uh, thoughts are the craziest like right before I go to sleep or right when I'm waking up and also they're really bad when I'm sleep deprived or when I'm like deprived in another way like of like I haven't had enough water like I'm dehydrated or I, I haven't eaten anything in a long time um, I find that it gets worse then so it's definitely like a physical thing that it, that attaches itself to my mental state so like I said a lot of people reach out to me and they'll, they'll basically say that they can't be helped because they're like no like my thoughts are crazy like you know you would never think the things that I am thinking. I'm like, no, I've been there. Like we've all been there. So um, I just wanted to read to you some of the thoughts that I have had or some of the compulsions that I have done just so that you know, you can like get a little taste inside my mind. Um, like I said, this is by no means all of them. This is not five years worth of thoughts, but these are just some of the like ones that stick in my mind that I can remember. Okay, so before we get into like the nitty gritty of this video, I do wanna, I guess, put a trigger warning. My cat's running around under the bed. I'm typically against trigger warnings because it kind of leads to that like avoidance compulsion. You're like, oh no, I don't wanna hear anything that's gonna trigger me or whatever, but that doesn't help anybody. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> um, because when you're in therapy, like the point is to purposely trigger yourself. So, I don't know. If you're if you're not into it, you don't have to watch, but I just want to say that I am going to be kind of going into some weird OCD thoughts. Okay, so this one I'm just going to jump right into it. I was really afraid of becoming a cannibal. <laughs> Which seems ridiculous right now, but it was in my mind. I thought it and it was because right around the onset of my OCD when I was like really bad, I could not eat, I could not keep food down and I was really afraid. I was like, what if I become so hungry that I just like start eating my family? So that happened. Um, and I've also had the really like fun, really um, wonderful feelings that like, what if I'm a pedophile? What if I want to commit incest or something? What if I want to go like be sexually deviant in some way? And those are pretty common, but I just wanted to say like, if you've thought it, like I've thought it too. Like it's been in here. It's it's popped around in my brain a little bit. And I, I've heard of other people say this too. And it's really funny because it's so weird. It's like, I've had the urge to like go to the police. Like if I, if I was out and I would see an officer and my thoughts are really bad, I would want to go to that officer and be like, listen, I need you to arrest me. And I like would imagine how this, this conversation would go. And they're like, okay, you know, what, what happened? And I'm like, well, I didn't do anything, but like my thoughts are really bad and um, I'm afraid that I might do something bad. And then, then it might turn into an issue. But of course, like I never went to the police and I never told them that like, oh, hey, I, you know, have a bad thought about doing something. <laughs> that 
cat wants me to throw this for him before I continue. I have had the thought that I would have to kill my family or want to kill my family for money. Like, like I would want to steal their money or something. Like, and these thoughts come in like, what if I want, what if I want to do that? Like, what if one day I want to do that to them and I want to steal their money? Like what? You know, it's so like ego dystonic and everything um, that it's like easy for me to look at it and, and laugh now, which is great because I progressed a lot and granted I put a lot of time and effort and a lot of work into progressing this far. But yeah, I used to have that thought that like I was gonna kill my family for their money. Like I was afraid that I might do that. I remember if you've watched my harm OCD video, um, specifically the first thought that really like set it off for me was I was holding my dog and I was like, oh my God, I could totally just break his neck right now. Like, what if I just broke his neck? Like, oh my God, what's keeping me from doing that? That one sticks out in my mind a lot. Cause that was really the first time that I was like, I had that panic, that like real anxiety. I've talked about this a lot actually just recently. Um, but whenever I'm on like a balcony or I'm on a roof or just in a high place, like a bridge or whatever, I'm always afraid cause OCD comes with also like unwanted urges and it's not like things that you want to act on but it's like a like you feel like compelled like you're going to act on it so if I'm high up I'm always afraid that I'm gonna be compelled to like jump off which like I've always you know kind of joked with whoever that I'm like well it's a good thing that I have bars on my windows here in China because otherwise I would have jumped off already granted I wouldn't have um probably I don't know see that's like I'm in a place with my OCD now that I can just be, I can just challenge it and be like, all right, well, maybe I would have jumped, I don't know. Which I hope that, you know, if you guys are having trouble, you'll be able to get here too one day. Um, I have also, I know that this is a common one as well. I have also worried that I, not only that I would put poison in pet food, like my, while making my pet's food, um, not that I will, but like that I already did and I don't remember it. So they'll start eating and I'll be like, oh, I'm like, wait a minute, did I poison? I, I can't remember, I can't remember. Similarly to the way that like, I'll leave my house, I'll lock the door, I will watch myself turn the lock on the door. And I'm literally looking at the keys in my hand, I'm like, okay, but how do I know that I actually lock the door? It's like, bitch, because you just locked the door. <laughs> like, So I, I have to go over it in my, like I have to do it again. I don't have to, see that's my, that's my obsessive mind talking. I don't have to do these compulsions, but I still do. You know, it happens, you slip sometimes. But like, I'll watch myself turn it and I'm like, how do I know? How do I know that I turn that lock? How do I know that I lock the door? So many times I've gotten, you know, in the elevator and had to come back out because I'm like, well, I don't know if I lock the door. Or I'll get to the edge of my like gate for my, my complex here and I'll have to come back and check because there's still some things that I'm just not comfortable with yet and I'm still working on them. Again, when it was really bad in the beginning, I remember wanting to ask my mom, and this is gonna sound so weird, but I wanted to ask her that if she could like tie me down when I went to go to bed, like if she could tie me down so that I wouldn't get up and like basically kill my family in the middle of the night. Also in that same vein, I remember like around that same time putting, and I actually did this, I put plastic, like crinkly plastic down on my floor in the doorway so that if I got up in the middle of the night to like attack my family or something, in my mind I was like, well, they'll hear the, they'll hear the plastic and they will wake up and it, it'll be fine. They'll catch me before I do anything. So I did that. That was like an actual compulsion that I did. Um, on an airplane, I've been really afraid because I don't like, what I don't like about flying is not really the whole like being in the air part. That doesn't bother me as much, but like being in a confined space for like a long period of time. And of course, for those of you guys who know, I live in China and I'm from the US originally. So it's a long haul back and forth. And I do it a couple times a year. So being in a confined space with the same people and like the same scenery for a long time really gets to me. So I find that my thoughts are pretty bad when I travel as well. Also because I'm not sleeping, I can't sleep in a moving vehicle or anything like that. So I'm always really afraid that I'm just gonna snap and like attack someone on the plane, like someone sitting next to me or just someone just because, because in my mind I'm like, well, I'm crazy. Like it could happen. I don't drive a car. But when I'm a passenger, I'm always conscious of the fact that I could just very easily like grab the wheel and like, drive us off the road or like do whatever. Um, and because of it, I used to I used to only sit in the back 
Um, I didn't want to sit like in the passenger seat because I thought that that was like too easy access to the, to the, the steering wheel. So a while back before I moved to China, I was in a couple of like group chats for like a language exchange thing. And I was really afraid that I was going to become obsessed with other people in the group chat and start stalking them. I like was really afraid that I was gonna become like very attached to certain people that like lived in different parts of the world and that I would like start to stalk them. <laughs> Similarly to like, if I already put poison in my like pet's food or if I like whether I've already locked the door or not, like and I can't remember type thing, I have typically, and this still happens, I have the fear, like if I'm, if I'm making tea or if I'm like heating something in the microwave or something, I'll like put whatever it is in the microwave and I'll like turn and I'll be like, wait a minute, did I put my cat or something in the microwave? And I'll have to like look at it. Okay, no, it's just a mug or it's just like a bowl or whatever. <laughs> but like, you know, in my mind, I'm like very afraid that I'm just gonna like put my cat in the microwave and like not even realize it. Like it wouldn't phase me. Like I wouldn't think about it. Like I would be that delusional that I would be so removed from myself that I would do something like that without thinking about it. I've also had fears that I would somehow be like recruited by like a terrorist group or something. I don't know, let's let's say ISIS just because like I've had fears that I was gonna like somehow be susceptible to being like lured into like a terrorist type thing. Um, one of the things that like, and I don't really talk about this one very much because it's still, it still makes me very uncomfortable, which means I should talk about it. I have this fear that my brother is actually dead and I'm the only one that doesn't know. So maybe I'm like seeing him as like a hallucination or something or, you know, whatever. And everyone is just like playing into this like delusion of mine that my brother is dead um, that he died, uh, I don't know, 20-ish years ago. Um, and that I've just like, throughout the years, built him up as this person that he would be. So he's 23 now. So if he died 20 years ago, okay, let's say he died when he was three. Like I have made him into this person for the past 20 years. And now I see him as like what he would have been as like a 23 year old adult. And that's something that like still kind of gets to me a little bit. I'm like low key afraid that this is not real. <laughs> which is like a common fear, I think, that people like can't tell reality versus like a dream or versus, you know, whatever other kind of like altered state. I've been afraid that I'm gonna stab somebody with my knitting needles. One time I saw a movie where this guy put his mouth over like this woman's eye socket and sucked her eyeball out of the socket. And so now whenever I kiss my pets like around their eyes, I'm afraid that I'm gonna do that. I've been afraid that I'm gonna take my turtle, my pet turtle, and like when, especially when she was real small, I was afraid for some reason I had this vivid thought. And this is, this is years ago. This is even before my OCD. It was like, I would get s thoughts stuck in my head. So that was like a precursor, I guess, to what was gonna happen. Um, but I would get this thought stuck in my head that I like my turtle would be like wedged under the rocker like of a rocking chair and she would get crushed and like I would see like I don't know that's been in my mind for years so you know how I said that I always wanted to sit in the back seat of a car because I was afraid of you know grabbing the steering wheel I was also afraid by sitting in the back that I was gonna choke the person that was sitting in front of me so I was kind of just like never happy in a vehicle I was really afraid that I was just gonna do something crazy. I've also been afraid that when I saw a police officer that I would grab their gun, which I guess says enough about, you know, that fear. That's pretty scary on its own. I was afraid that I was going to become like infatuated with a celebrity. Um, I guess similar to how I was afraid about like group chats or whatever. I was afraid that like, let's say there's a celebrity that I really liked, like a, you know, whatever like a singer or something. And then if I found out that they were like in a relationship or if I found out, I don't know, whatever, that I was gonna become so like distraught by it that I was gonna do something that didn't like correlate. So, so for an example, let's say I found out my favorite celebrity was like dating someone that because of that, I was gonna like kill my dog or something like what? And it sounds so like, the thing is that when you're in it, it makes sense and it's so scary. Um, I was also afraid that like if I got my hair cut, so I used to have really long hair, you guys might remember. I had really long hair 
and I was afraid that if I got it cut, it would like change my personality. Like somehow it was like, what was that story where it's like a Bible story? I can't remember. But I was afraid that like, it was somehow gonna like change my personality if I cut, if I cut my hair off. Okay, so those are most of the things that I can think of right now. But the whole purpose is because I want you guys to see that like we've all had crazy things and I know that there are still gonna be people out there like watching this video that are like, yeah, but you didn't mention this thing and this is what I thought and you know, that means that I'm different and I can't be helped. That's not true. <laughs> On that note though, I would love for you guys in the comments below um, if you feel comfortable sharing some of your craziest thoughts or some of the compulsions that you've gone through. Um, this is all just in an effort to kind of like help each other out and be like, oh wow, you thought that? Listen, this is what I thought. And make people realize that no matter kind of what they're thinking or what they're going through, they're not really alone. And there's someone that's kind of had a similar thought just because, you know, I think it's easy to kind of, it's happened to me too, where I've definitely got in into that mindset that I'm like, no, I'm somehow different from these people that are getting help that are benefiting from therapy. Like I am somehow different from that. And I'm not, like I benefited from therapy and I think, you know, I'm in a much better place and I want people to realize too that five years ago, I would have definitely thought by now I'd be dead. Like I would have definitely thought that I would have killed myself at this point. But when I think about a lot of the things that I've accomplished in the past five years, I'm like, wow, like, like I moved to the other side of the world. Like I, this is, I'm going on my third year living in China. Um, and I never thought that I could do that. Like I've traveled a lot, you know, I've, I've done all kinds of things. I've rescued a dog and a cat. It's amazing to me that, you know, five years ago, did I think that I was gonna be in China working on my master's degree? No, I definitely thought I'd be dead. <laughs> you know, jokes aside, like it can happen for you. You know, if you're struggling, it does get better. There are definitely ups and downs and that's kind of just like, that's just how it goes. All right guys, so like I said, leave any comments or any, you know, any thoughts you want to get out, anything you want to share with anybody. Um, again, I'm going to leave the BetterHelp link in the description. And um, on that note, I will see you guys later. Bye.